The weather is 30 degrees Celsius at the Port Harcourt refinery in Eleme River State on this day. The heat is the least of concerns on the minds of the workers here. All hands and boots are on deck to achieve a common goal, getting the refinery back in operation. The facility which comprises processing units, utility plants and tank farms is undergoing a comprehensive rehabilitation involving a complete overhaul and change out of major equipment. Looking at the metal work from the outside, it may not look like much has been accomplished. This is because the rehabilitation of the 53-year-old refinery goes beyond its static metallic frame, which is the first thing you see. The facility's instrumentation and control units, the brain of the refinery, is undergoing a complete overhaul. The rotating equipment, comprising pumps and compressors, have been upgraded and are all in place. Electrical systems, which include substations, transformers, cables, switch gears and panels, are all brand new while static equipment like tanks, heater columns and drums are being refurbished. We have refineries in the world that are over a hundred years. The basic static equipment, which is just the, the metallic part you see, stays fundamentally the same. Upgrades happen over the years. Yes, the old Portacot refinery was built in 1965, but as time went on, the instrumentations were upgraded, equipment were upgraded over years. So when we started this project, it was awarded in 2021, April to be precise, that plant then had undergone levels of upgrades. So instrumentation-wise, it has latest technologies too. For instance, the distributed control system, it is the latest we have in the market. So the refinery is coming back in very good quality to perform and compete optimally. Yes, the fact that it was built in 65 is yes, it's true. But most of what is left of 65 is just the major static equipment and the metal frame, frame. So for me, the refinery will come back in force and it will be very competitive. About 3,000 workers play their part each day to get the work done. From piping, welding to fabrication, the relationship between man, machine and metal is constant. So far, the plant has recorded 8.3 million man-hours with zero lost time to injuries. The reason isn't far-fetched. HSE rules are always adhered to. By the colors, you can identify them. The blues are the engineers. The brown is for operations. The orange overalls represent the contractors. Out with the old and in with the new. The removal and replacement of piping work is a major task at the Port Harcourt refinery. For a refinery built in 1965, it's understandable. Over 75% of this task has been completed and accelerated as workers run day and night shifts. The plant has also recorded remarkable milestones against all odds. Basic markers for a major project like this is deliveries of your long lead items. We have items here that we've installed in the plants that took 18 months to manufacture. Those items are now on ground. We have the boilers, we have pumps made by OEMs, Gabonetta, Arturia in Italy. They've come on site and we've installed them. So our long lead items are on site. Instrumentation are on site. We've completed most of the procurement we need to do. The procurement, we have gone over 98%. Most of them are now delivered and they are on site. Piping work we're doing, we have progressed extensively. For electrical, we have had most of our cable laying done. Many of our substations now have been energized. So when I say December is feasible, yes, because we have really progressed extensively. So that makes me very comfortable. For the construction, that is the part I'm finishing now. And that's the part for the old refinery, I'll have it ready by December 2023. As promising as it sounds, the question on the minds of many is the cause of delay in delivery. 
the managing director of the Port Harcourt Refinery, reels out the facts behind the recess. We had clear governance in place to award this project. However, when we came to the tendering process, remember 2020, COVID came upon us. And we walked throughout the COVID. We were interfacing with the OEMs, with the contractors, potential contractors then, bidders, throughout the COVID. And we ended up at award in 20, early first quarter 2021. Remember, COVID was still with us then. That was when we awarded the project. This contributed to the initial mobilizations and placement of our long lead items. Now, here it was, a lot of the factories in the world were shut down. China was shut down, Europe was shut down. So there was a lot of force majeures by the OEMs because they couldn't produce them on time. That was one of the factors. This also added to the extended COVID shutdown in China. It took a while for China to open up. Also, the global supply chain was broken. We had so much problem sourcing our parts, even getting these parts now delivered. So that was the first one that caused, that was the issues that caused the delay. And as we're coming out of COVID, the Russia-Ukraine war now hit. The sanctions on Russia and the countries that were affiliated with them and also getting these uh, pro- uh, materials out became an issue. To even worsen it, the global manufacturers of arms also came into the market. Remember, this plant operates on very smart technology. Sadly, you, you may, also may know that these smart technologies are what drive wars. So when the global arms manufacturers came in, they are the big boys. They took everything off the market. Components became a problem. We couldn't source, and the manufacturers also threw in further force majeures. Despite all these challenges, we were able to come back, put the project back on track, and we're now aimed at the end of the year to deliver the old refinery. This explains the celebration of the arrival of two 120 ton per hour boilers manufactured in Italy, weighing 200,000 kilograms. It is used in generating steam used for atomizing fuel and various processes, including running equipment like turbines and fire preventions. The boiler is just one of many long lead items that suffered major delays in arrival. On completion of the rehabilitation, the refinery will produce petroleum products such as liquefied petroleum gas, premium motor spirit, dual purpose kerosene, automotive gas oil, and low and high pore fuel oil. For the managing director of one of Nigeria's biggest and oldest refinery, the success goes beyond the operations that will begin in December 2023. So the beauty about the rehabilitation going on in Port Harcourt Refinery is that we imported a lot of long lead items and these equipment are going to serve us for generations to come.